start by base coating the face and hands with Bugman's Glow. Layer over all the exposed skin with a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Bugman's Glow. Try and make this a consistent, solid layer for the best effect for the following highlight stages. Highlight all the skin and exposed flesh with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Once the ripened flesh shade wash is dry, re-layer with the pure Cadian flesh tone, leaving the wash showing in the recesses between the fingers and around the bridge of the nose. Highlight the flesh with a mix of about 75% Cadian flesh tone and 25% pallid witch flesh. Pay particular attention to defining the fingers further, as well as drawing it slowly down the back of the hand to show the musculature and bone underneath. Apply a final dot highlight by adding more padded witch flesh to the previous mix. This will bring it to an approximate 50-50 split. Apply this to the knuckle joints, fingertips and cheekbones under the helmet. Face coat the hair and beard with Steel Legion Brown. Layer the hair with a 50-50 mix of Steel Legion and Zemesi Desert. This will provide a rich blonde colour that is commonplace among the people of Rohan. Once the wash is dry, reapply the previous layer blocking out the biggest areas of hair and leaving the wash showing in the more defined recesses. Add some pallid witch flesh to the mix for the first highlight. Now you want to concentrate on starting to pick out individual hairs on both the beard and in the head. add more pallid witch flesh to the mix for the final edge highlight. Draw the paint more towards the tips of the hair and beard and the more pronounced raised areas. Face coat the chain mail and spear tip with lead belcher. The model also has sheen guards which should be painted this way, but unfortunately I didn't really notice this until later in the video. Oops. Once the null oil is dry, apply an edge highlight with a 50-50 mix of lead belcher and pallid witch flesh. Face 
coat the cloak with a mix of wild flesh and briar buck. You may need to apply this in several thin coats to get a solid colour throughout. Layer the cloak by adding some zemesi desert to the previous mix. This will bring a richness to the green colour that we are trying to go for in the end. Continue to add zemesi desert in increments for the next few highlights. At every stage focus more and more on the upper fold of the cloak trying to follow the flow of the material to give a more authentic finished look. This maintains the richness of the green whilst also bringing the hue up more naturally than the lighter green or white wood at this stage. Finally add some pallid witch flesh to the mix for the final edge highlight. Apply this to the uppermost fold of the cloak where the light would hit more naturally. Base coat the inner robes, sleeves and inner areas of the helmet with a 50-50 mix of rhinoxide and dry bark. Layer the browns by adding some Gawthor brown to the previous mix. Leave some of the deeper recesses clear and still showing the previous rhinox dryad mix. Add more Gawthor Brown to the mix for the next highlight. Now you want to focus on the uppermost areas of the material as we did with the green cloak, as well as outlining the inner areas of the helmet. Finally, apply an edge highlight of pure Gawthor Brown, further accentuating these highlights.
belt, spear shaft, sleeves and shoes are base coated with dry buff. This is to provide a slight but noticeable contrast with the rest of the leathers and rounds. Edge highlight all these elements with pure gore-filled brown. To achieve the wood grain effect on the spear, gently feather your paintbrush down in random vertical lines. Any thicker areas that you're not happy with, you can touch up again after with dryer bark. Paint the centre of the shield and the trim around the helmet with Sycorax Bronze. We aren't going to cover non-metallic this time as we've covered that in a few previous videos and the Rahirin benefit from a more muted, beaten gold effect. Once the wash is dry, edge highlight the gold with iron breaker. Follow the upper curve of the shield center as well as the most pronounced points and edges of the helmet trim. Paint the outer shield rims with wild flesh. We're doing this first so as not to potentially paint over any of the horse decoration once that's been painted. Edge highlight around the whole shield inner and outer areas with a mix of wild flesh and some messy desert. This will help it tie in with the rest of the green on the model as it doesn't have the extensive highlight stages, it adds a level of contrast in comparison. Paint the horse decals with Rekarth Flesh. You probably have to apply a few thin layers to achieve a solid, clean colour. Once the wash is dry, repaint over the flat areas of the decals with Rakarth flesh again, leaving the wash showing in the recesses to provide some depth. Finally, edge highlight with pure pallid witch flesh. If these lines come out too thick or you make a mistake, you can easily touch up with a small amount of Rakarth flesh to make the lines as clean and thin as possible.